Okay, welcome back everybody. Thanks for getting back with the introduction to programming class. Now we're going to have some fun. So we're going to practice uh, what we've learned so far regarding our four conditional structures. I want to figure out, I want to guess the outcome to the, to the, uh, the following that I'm going to show you. Number one, okay, we want to find out what value will appear in the message box generated by the following code. This is the following code, okay? And we're dimensioning two variables, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to give you a few seconds and then come back and we're going to go ahead and look at this. Look at the answer to this. Okay, I hope that you've figured this out, folks. Okay, let's go through this together. I'm going to go ahead and press F8. I want to F8 through it because being that it's a desktop, being that I can control the, I can look at each variable individually by using the F8 key, I can get step through the code. Now, right now, enter X is 0. Now it's 8. Now it's five. Oh, by the way, did everybody think it was eight? Uh, hmm, let's see. Eight plus five is not eight. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to go back to whatever grid it was. You have to figure that out. So it's really 13. So your answer is Five. Uh, it's not the sum of these, but it's answered is uh, five, which is y. Okay, it's not eight; it's thirteen, so it's y. That's confusing. All right, on to number two. So evaluate number two. So the question here is, what do you think will be the ending value of SGR response? Again. Here's some time. Okay, folks, hopefully you figured this out. Uh, just by glancing at it, should be, it should be cheese. <laughs> Not smash cheese, guy, but cheese. Yes, what mice love to eat, cheese. Okay. Oh, this is a funny story. So, if you want to catch a mouse, what do you want to do? You want to make a sound like cheese. Anyway, ha ha. Okay, because my mice love cheese. So, anyway, so thank you for listening. IT code equals 23. And then we're selecting the case for int code. Now remember the select case statement selects the value and then then it goes ahead and it exits exits the, the loop, the case structure. So here 50 is about 15, about 20, it's 23 though. Remember this int code is 23. Case 23 the temp is cheese. Now the response is going to be Cheese, code name cheese, yeah, for cheese. Okay. So again, I would uh, definitely recommend for large and complex structures use the use this. Use the uh, select case select case structure. All right. For this one, now uh, I want to find out. What value will appear in the message box generated by the following code? By this code right here, what value will be in the message box? And I'll give you some time. Okay, hopefully you figured this out, folks. Let us see if you figured out, let's see, DBL 
x is 2. If you're not real math inclined, go ahead and step through it. Figure it out. You have to be somewhat math inclined to be a programmer anyway, but so DBL x is 1.5. What's nice about this, you have the F8 key, which you can step through your code and see your check your variables. You can do it if you're kind of slow. Go ahead and step through it. Yeah, I always like to step through it because I can see each variable. I can't if I want to think my feet, think real quick, do a calculation real quick. Not good. I like to see it on paper though. I can make a guess, but it probably won't be accurate. So DBLX is 1.5, and 2 times 1.5 is 3. 2 times 1.5 is 3. Then, if DBLX is greater than 2, which is 1.5, it's not. So you get a mess box it. If not, else if DBLX is greater than 3, which is uh, DBLY is greater than 3, it's not greater than, it's equal to. So it's going to be else. Everybody who said else is the winner. And on to step number 4. Okay, this structure right here. So the question, what value will appear in the message box generated by the following code? All right, this code is going to generate a message box as well. And I'll give you a couple seconds, a few seconds to kind of figure this one out. Okay, hopefully you figured this one out. Now we have, we dimension both these, BLN OK and current price. So BLN OK is true and current price is 5. So press F8, we'll step through it. BLN OK is true. And now the thing about the if statement, if condition, if structure, it's going to go to the first one. The first one says that it's true, it's going to discontinue, it's going to say that's your answer and that it's going to exit. Even despite the fact that both of these are true, it's going to go to the first one that's true. Okay, you may want to use a do loop if you had to evaluate two true things. If this do to a false. Do, do until false and then keep doing it until it's false. Because that's going to be true, and the next one's going to be true. So really, BLN OK is true, and price is true. But it's going to say BLN OK is going to be true. Yeah, did y'all see that? Yeah. There it is again. Alright folks, thanks for, thanks for watching, and we're going to continue on in just a few with calling procedures.